Scotland. Almost 80,000 square kilometers of enchanting land. With dramatic wilderness and an amazing array of spectacular wildlife. From the iconic and the extremely rare to the hunters and the hunted. Filmed over four dramatic seasons, creatures here will need strength and tenacity to survive a wild and unpredictable year. Summer has finally arrived in Scotland, bringing long days, warm air, and an abundance of food. Young and old must grab it while they can. Summers up here are short. And if they don't use this time wisely, they'll face impossible odds later in the year. In the oak woods of Scotland's west coast, summer brings to a climax a remarkable transformation that started in spring. With their new leaves now fully unfurled, these oaks can easily absorb the warm summer sunlight and continue to grow. On their nest, at the edge of the wood, two white-tailed eaglets have been through big changes of their own. They're growing more each day, and now they're starting to resemble their parents. But the bossy, older female eaglet is making life hard for her little brother. She started picking on him at the end of April, when they were only a few days old. She kept attacking him in the nest. Especially at meal times. A month later, she was still giving him the evil eye. It's now July, and life isn't getting any easier for her put upon little brother. He's often hungry. But even when his parents do return with a meal, he has to fight to keep it. It's barely more than a mouthful. But his big sister steals it away from him anyway. She's becoming more aggressive every day. Mum and Dad will try to keep both chicks well fed. but they're powerless to help him. If he doesn't get his fair share of the food, then his days are surely numbered.
summer on Scotland's beautiful and remote Shetland Islands. And the seas are full of plentiful feeding opportunities. It's the perfect time for last year's baby otters to leave their parents and go it alone. But one young otter is still very attached to his mum. He's a year old now and should be leaving to claim a territory of his own. Today, fate may get in the way and force his hand. A big dog otter has picked up their scent and he's got his eye on mum. He's looking for a mate and he's willing to fight and kill anyone who stands in his way. Right in his firing line is the young otter cub. The cub might be in for a nasty lesson. He has no idea he's becoming a third wheel and needs to be sent packing. The big male approaches. But rather than run, the cub stands his ground. The dog otter isn't giving up. He tries a different approach. This time, it's the female that warns him off. But there's no real malice. His lack of aggression suggests that he's the cub's father. Back to woo his old flame. He slips back into the water and waits. and soon she follows. She'll consider mating with her old flame, but she's not ready yet. To bring her into season, you'll have to court her. And that means putting vital time and energy into play. usually tender. Occasionally aggressive. The more persistent he is, the greater the chances are of fathering her next cub. These mating rituals can last a week or more. But her current cub has to face reality. With Dad back on the scene, it's time to move on and make a future of his own. The Scottish Highlands are an unforgiving place, even in summer. especially for a young red deer calf who's just been born on a desolate hillside. His mother came here to give birth on her own and must now lead her calf away from the high ground. Even in summer, the weather up here can suddenly close in.
the rest of the herd are a couple of kilometres away, where they found a hidden glen to feed in. Some calves stay close to their mums for protection, while others hide in the bracken, where they're less visible to hungry eagles. For new arrivals, it's like the first day at nursery school. And curiosity soon gets the better of them. There are potential playmates everywhere. And soon a new boy is tearing in to flush them out. But playing burns up vital energy, which the calves can ill afford to lose. Feeding must always take priority. The bigger and faster they grow, the better their chances of survival. In the mountains above, time is against the newborn calf. It's late in the calving season, and summers here are short. He has less time to put on the vital weight he needs to help him make it through his first winter. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. In early spring, the only color on the drab Scottish moors was the hidden gold in the wings of the emperor moths. They emerged early to meet and lay their eggs. But in the summer, the moors themselves put on a show. The heather is blooming, and a progeny of the emperor moths are making the most of it. Six weeks ago, this caterpillar hatched from an egg the size of a pinhead. Since then, he's gorged on heather. Now, at six centimetres long, he's ready to transform into adulthood. But first, he needs somewhere safe. to build a cocoon in which he will undergo a complete makeover. Using special silk secreted from his salivary glands, he makes an anchor. And once firmly attached, he begins to spin the silk around himself. Soon, he's surrounded in a gradually hardening capsule It'll keep him safe all autumn and winter. Until next spring, when the Emperor Moth will finally be free from his self-imposed exile. As temperatures continue to climb in July, the heather bloom stretches deep into the Caledonian forest. Where a red squirrel mum is having a well-earned break. She successfully raised two kittens in early spring and now has three more. While she rests, they play outside their nest, high in a birch. And are getting more adventurous by the day.
They're curious about their woodpecker neighbor. And keen to practice their tree climbing skills. But midsummer's not a great time to raise a family. The food she stored last year has run out. And most birds have finished breeding. So she can't raid their nests for eggs anymore. Until autumn brings a fresh crop of fruits, nuts and fungi, she'll travel further and longer each day in search of food. Her kittens are hungry too. But they're not brave enough to leave the safety of the trees. Just yet. So for now, they have to make do with eating wood and bark. And any insects they manage to find in the crevices. Finally, their mother secures a meal. A red deer antler cast off in spring might not look like much, but it is a valuable source of calcium. But it won't give her the calories she needs. Until autumn comes, Life will be tough for her and her babies. Summer days are already beginning to get shorter. So for many animals, this is the last opportunity to learn vital survival skills from mum and dad. to help see them through the colder months to come. There's no chicks left in this female greater spotted woodpecker's nest to feed. But her youngsters haven't gone far. The fledglings with their crimson crowns are out hunting their own grubs. But efficient pecking takes practice. So Dad's on hand to help. He knows exactly where to look. A fledgling follows him closely, watching his technique, before trying it herself. She finds nothing. So her dad feeds her instead. These free meals are just a stopgap until the young woodpeckers master the art of pecking for themselves. And they're fast learners. In just 10 days' time, they'll leave this patch of forest with all the skills they require to survive on their own. Nearby, both white-tailed eaglets have made it so far. 
but they're still nest-bound. Since they hatched 80 days ago, they've had to deal with the weather, bothersome bugs, and boredom. But everything is about to change. The wind's picking up. Conditions are perfect for a spot of flight practice. The young male starts with some wing stretches. His big sister doesn't look impressed. and shows him how it's done. Even using him as a landing pad. The nest just isn't big enough for both of the growing eaglets anymore. But the little male won't have to suffer his sister for much longer. Dad lands nearby, spurring the young female on. She moves to the edge of the nest. And suddenly, she's off. The next day brings wet weather to the west coast. And now the young male eaglet must bear it alone. Although he has the feathers to fly, he doesn't yet have the strength or confidence. But he's not short on determination. As the rain passes, he pulls himself up by the bootstraps. And gets on with some flight practice. His parents are still bringing him food. But it's a mixed blessing. His sister's back. She's hungry too. She watches her brother intently with her beady eye as she plans her next move, her most brutal yet. After a brief visit, Mum returns to hunting. The younger eaglet is all alone once again. His sister fledged yesterday, but she hasn't gone far. She's keeping her eye on things. She waits for her parents to drop off a meal for her brother. And then she makes her move. She steals his food. But she also wants to get rid of him. He does his best to fight back. But she's too strong. And she pushes him towards the edge. He tries to cling to the branches below but can't get a firm grip and falls. With her brother out of the way, she'll now get every meal her parents bring.
15 meters below. He survived the fall. But he can't fly yet. And there's no way back up to the nest. Down here, he's vulnerable to hungry badgers and foxes. He calls desperately to attract attention. But there's no one on the nest to hear him. The forest floor is a dangerous place. It's the graveyard of the weak. Wood mice live fast and die young. But they play a vital role, even in death. A dead mouse could attract a multitude of insects. But some are keen to have it all to themselves. A whiff of death on the breeze tingles the antenna of a male sexton beetle. He sets off to track it down. Too late. A female beetle has already staked her claim to the corpse. And she won't share it with anyone else. Except a potential mate. But they won't tuck into this meal just yet. They have a greater goal in mind. This mouse will be valuable food for their babies. But if they're to keep it, there's a lot of work to do. First, they measure up the body. And if it's not too big to handle, they set about burying it. Loosening the soil with their heads, they dig a channel under the mouse until it slowly sinks into its grave. A few days later, new life awakens in Oakwood. Just hatched beetle babies are ravenous. Luckily, mum and dad have stocked the larder well. The decaying mouse is all the nutrition that the youngsters will ever need until they become adults themselves. And the search for the sexton beetle's next cadaver begins all over again. By late summer, temperatures in the highlands have peaked. Red deer stags gather on the high ground, trying their best to stay cool. But it's not working. There's barely a breeze. And the midges are driving them to distraction. So instinct drives them on. The hinds and their calves have the same problem. And soon the two herds are mingling. They usually spend summer apart from each other. 
But today, they've all got the same thing on their mind. Their territory contains a number of small lochs. A quick dip will cool them down. And bring relief from biting insects. The stags lead the way. They have plenty of strength and stamina. And can swim for kilometers. The calves follow on, but they're more hesitant. It's the first time they've faced open water. But the urge to follow the herd is strong. As more adults power across, the youngest calf takes the plunge. Hollow hairs in his fur will keep him buoyant. as he follows closely in his mother's wake. The brief rest from the heat and the midges was welcome. But far bigger challenges lie ahead. Winter will claim the weakest calves first. So he must start piling on the kilos now. Before summer comes to an end. The clock is ticking for the animals in Shetland, too. Back in spring, 20,000 gannets arrived here to raise a family. And now they face a battle to keep their youngsters well fed. So that they're ready in late August to begin the long journey to their winter grounds off the coast of West Africa. Gannets feed their chicks by regurgitating fish. But this female has nothing left in her stomach. Her partner went fishing almost five hours ago. So all they can do is sit tight and hope that he returns soon with a full belly. Every fishing trip can take Dad over 150 kilometers from the nest. But once they spot a school of fish, the gannets fold back their wings and drop like arrows. They hit the water at almost 100 kilometers per hour. Sometimes just centimeters from each other. Many have to make multiple dives.
before they claim a fish. And every attempt they make increases their chances of being injured. Once full, they face a long journey back to the nest. It's now seven hours since the chick was fed. And he's getting weaker. He needs at least two square meals a day if he's to survive. Gannets can recognize their mate, even among so many other birds. Finally, Dad arrives, and the family is reunited. But it's just a changing of the guard. Now it's Mum's time to go fishing. If she's successful, she'll be back before nightfall. By then, their chick will be desperate for another tasty meal. It's late July. And summer has delivered a bounty to the Shetland coast. In its shallow waters, rare visitors lurk. A pod of orcas is on the lookout for an easy meal. Otters, common and grey seals are all fair game for these sea wolves. When orcas spring an ambush, escape is almost impossible. For the five-ton titans, a single seal is just a meagre morsel. Soon, the hunt is back on. A bit further south, the coast is clear. Here, the land gives way to a much gentler landscape. Where an old female otter prepares to go hunting. She's blind, so just getting down to the shore is tricky for her. But her survival instinct is still strong. She takes her time to smell and listen for danger. And when the moment is right, she heads for the sea. These days, she can't see her food in the water. But she can use her sensitive paws and whiskers to find it. It's a crab. A valuable meal for a blind otter. But getting back to shore is going to be tough. A slight fumble and she loses the crab in the tangle of weed. Every trip uses vital energy. But she must try again. 
These waters are full of food. And it's not long before she's back. Another fumble, and another crab slips away. But the old otter keeps going. And eventually, she emerges with the biggest crab so far. This time, she keeps a firm grip and gets it ashore, just in time to relieve her hunger. Almost 500 kilometers south of Shetland, just south of Cairngorms National Park, lies a very special wetland. It's been shaped over two decades by a family of busy beavers. They try to avoid sunlight. But summer nights up here are so short, it's forcing them to work through the daylight hours. They must maintain a series of pools where they can raise their family. This year's young beavers were born in their secret lodge at the water's edge. Now nearly a month old, they're starting to explore on their own. Their parents are busy with chores. While Dad checks the dam for leaks, Mum goes on patrol, looking for signs of intruders. There's also bedding and food to collect and channels to keep clear for these busy beavers. With such a long to-do list, the beaver youngsters are left unguarded. And now two otters have picked up their scent. And they've killed baby beavers here before. There's nowhere for the beavers to hide from these aquatic predators. The otters move in for the kill. One heads straight for where the scent is strongest, the baby's hideout. The young beavers make a break for it, perhaps sensing the trouble the beaver mum heads back. She needs to get her babies away from the lodge and from danger. But she can only take one at a time. She returns for her next baby. But it's confused. So she bundles him into her mouth. Mm. 
one otter heads straight for the lodge. But this time, they've been outmaneuvered and outsmarted by the beavers. The otters will be back. And the beaver family will be playing cat and mouse with them until the kits are big enough to defend themselves. By early August, there's a change in the air. Skies are growing heavy. And rivers run fast, fueled by recent rain. Signs that summer doesn't have long to run. Scotland's white-tailed eagles must make the most of the ocean's bounty before fish head into deeper waters for winter. In the sea off the Isle of Skye, some get a helping hand. These seas are a vital hunting ground for eagles and people alike. And for one man who's been fishing these waters all his life, now's the perfect time to give something back. The eagles recognize his boat. And soon home in. Feeding Scotland's largest bird of prey has benefits for both. Every fish is a valuable meal for the eagles. And in return, he gets to watch them in action. safe in the knowledge that he's helping them to thrive on this rugged Scottish island. <laughs> <laughs> 